have the uh, SEO accelerator, launch accelerator. So um, yeah, the words over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much. Also, oh, how's everyone doing this afternoon? Yeah, very good. So my name is Pat Lowry. I am the CEO of Iconic Lab, which is an ICO and token sale accelerator program where basically we leverage our background as venture capitalists and investment managers to identify and fund the most promising crypto, blockchain, and tokenizable startups and then accelerate them towards their own ICO. But today I'm not really going to talk about a pitch as what you're probably familiar with, but rather we're going to dive into defining what an ICO is and how we at Iconic Lab perform due diligence on companies that apply to our program to determine if it's an ICO that's worth us making an investment in. Because prior to actually helping these companies do their own ICO, we do have our own skin in the game and make an investment ourselves. And we're also then going to discuss how you can, as a retail investor or even an institutional investor, leverage these insights that we have through our own due diligence to perform your own when you look at investing in your own ICO opportunities. So first off, we have to define what an ICO is. And very traditionally, an ICO um, or a token generated event, these are two legally distinct events. We're just going to the purpose of this uh, conversation to refer to them solely as an ICO, are defined as a project which sells its underlying tokens or cryptocurrencies in exchange for financing to help further development of the platform or company. In this regard, it's very similar to an IPO. However, there are very significant legal distinctions in that in most cases, an ICO is a utility instrument, or at least they're still pretending to be a utility instrument, which we'll jump into a little bit later. And what this effectively does is create an investment opportunity where individuals such as yourselves or institutions have a liquid market, similar to an IPO, in which they can trade the assets that they have invested in. Additionally, it is significantly easier, theoretically, from a startup's perspective, to fundraise through an ICO, directly engaging your community of users, those that can contribute to the platform, to help develop and scale uh, the business itself. Now this disrupts the venture capital model, in a sense that there is no longer a gatekeeper, as a VC traditionally would be that holds the money on behalf of investors that are invested into their fund and determines on behalf of those investors where the financing will be placed. This decentralizes the investment opportunity and comes at significantly less cost to investors, where typically an investor would have to pay a 2 and 20 fee off of an investment that they did not make the decision to make themselves. Now there are all sorts of different types of token instruments and realistically the tokens are only limited in their uniqueness as we can determine from a human creative standpoint. Most commonly though is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the major tokens you see on the exchanges. These are the typical cryptocurrencies themselves. There are also membership style tokens or access tokens, such as the Iconic Lab token, which grant access to the user to certain data, certain investment opportunities, or other information that is most uh, useful for the investor. There are also hybrid tokens that are similar to securities, however, offer some utility function, such as Steemit. For instance, Steemit's token operates as a debt instrument, however, has no actual recall claim on the financing of the instrument itself, but rather allows users within a social media ecosystem to be compensated for the content they generate. And then lastly, there are security tokens. In the very near future, we're probably going to be seeing significantly more of these as more traditionally minded investors enter this space, as well as regulators jump in and really start to push for more further regulation on these token instruments and better clarify what a utility or service instrument is versus a financial security. I don't have to tell everyone in the audience the reason you're here is that ICOs really took off last year. We saw roughly 300 companies raise almost $4 billion um, unfortunately, what we found out recently in an article that was just published this week, 42% of those companies that raised this financing have already failed. But don't let those numbers fool you, it was actually only about $230 million of investor dollars that were lost, rather than 40% of $4 billion. But there's a lot of issues in the ICO markets. A lot of the companies don't have pre-seed funding to be able to finance their operations as they go to an ICO, and there's a lot of scams and frauds out there. Additionally, 
the projects will liquidate themselves and do not behave in a legal or regulatory compliant manner, whether it be from security jurisdictions to uh, KYC and AML, and most certainly when it comes to tax. So the question is, with all these problems in the ICO markets, how do you go about evaluating them? Well, we have five simple steps that I would like to impart upon to you to help you evaluate investment opportunities. And the first one starts with the project itself. Does it solve the need? The first thing a VC looks at with any company that they would look to invest in is does the project actually fix a pain point within the ecosystem or target market that they're looking for? Now, in this instance, companies aren't actually selling a project, right? They're not selling a service directly to you, but rather they're providing a token. And the token offers you access to service or utility within the ecosystem they're creating. And there are many different types of metrics that you could use to try to evaluate these. For instance, cryptocurrencies. I would rec uh, recommend that every investor in this room look at these from a project-driven analysis. Is this a platform that's scalable? How many developers are behind the platform? Is what they're trying to accomplish technologically feasible? If you look at membership tokens, you have to use your own utility analysis. For instance, how would I expect to use the Iconic Lab token? Well, we can get into that a little bit later, but effectively, the Iconic Lab token should be valued at the discounted cash flow of the monetizable amount of the bonuses and discounts from the pre-sales of our own companies you participate in. There are also hybrid tokens, such as what I mentioned before at Steemit. These are security-like, and I would recommend using a network effect KPI analysis to determine how many users, unique users, recurring users, contribute to the platform. This allows you to be able to value the, actual, the underlying instrument itself, in this instance, Steam. And then, of course, there are security tokens. And these, you can use very traditional style analyses on to be able to determine if they do have cash flow generation. What is the dividend yield that I can expect on my investment? What is the interest rate that the debt instrument may be paying out? Now, the problem is, with given the current speculative nature of the crypto ecosystem, it is very difficult to apply these analyses. So until we eliminate the volatility in the marketplace, these will not hold much water. And it's only through having tangible and sustainable investment vehicles that we can create, for instance, through Iconic Lab, or through further regulation and financial reporting metrics to be mandated upon ICOs, is this going to be of merit? The next step is probably the most important in my view, evaluate the teams and advisors. Is the team anonymous? Some of them are, don't invest. Is the team capable of delivering on what they say they will from a project standpoint? Do they have the internal competencies from financial to tech to marketing, et cetera, to be able to load and scale their program? And further, really take a look at an advisory board. A lot of people that sit on advisory boards are nothing but names and faces. You wouldn't believe how many people have reached out to Iconic Lab and asked us, hey, if you give us 2% of your tokens, we'll let you use our name and face on your advisory board. It happens more often than you think. Make sure there's a real use case for the advisor itself. <coughs> Next, evaluate their go-to-market strategy. Who are they targeting? Are you a part of that target market? If somebody is offering a utility instrument and you aren't a part of their market where you're going to get any utility out of participating in the platform, I mean, frankly, why the hell would you invest? You're only investing in the pure speculation that the token value will appreciate. And that's probably not a very good strategy to have to pay or participate in the ICO markets. Next, you should also look at their, there's a business model. So is there an underlying for-profit generating vehicle or business behind the token instrument or the platform? Understanding this business model will be key to understanding the long-term growth prospects of the investment you're making in the ICO platform. <laughs> Lastly, and probably most importantly, is looking at the legal, regulatory, and tax issues. A lot of companies completely ignore these. Some of them will issue blatant securities in jurisdictions that will come cracking down on them. We've seen some happen in Germany recently. We'll be seeing many, many more come out in the near future. And we all, I think everybody knows the SEC standpoint when it comes to these instruments. Additionally, there's tax implications. Utility tokens in many jurisdictions are considered taxable. That could apply. Corporate income tax could apply unless you get fun with your accounting and book passive liabilities and look uh, forward them into the future.
But this is something that, as an investor, you have to take into consideration as you look to perform your analyses on the investments you're making. 50% of the cash you invest might be going out the window. So be careful. Now, after you've looked at all of these, you, of course, have to manage your portfolio. I would recommend using the type of analyses that I had recommended previously. However, as I mentioned, it is very difficult to do these given the very speculative nature of the assets today. Only through further financial reporting, only through further regulation, can we look to eliminate the volatility in the marketplace. So what tools should you use for this? Well, first of all, ICO list and ratings websites. Some of them are very credible. However, be careful. Only go with the major name brand ones. Because, for instance, we've had ICO ratings list reach out to us, ask us if we would be willing to contribute in Ether for a rating of 85 out of 100, for instance. But it costs three Ethers to get a rating of 95 or above. Stefan's laughing because he knows it's true. So be careful when you look at these rating sites. A lot of them are scams themselves. Probably the best information you can get comes from the community. So engage the community channels. Go on Telegram, go on Slack, talk directly to the individuals that are in charge of the project. That's where you get the best information. And then, of course, look at expert analysis. Smith & Crown is phenomenal when it comes to this. Cointelegraph is phenomenal when it comes to their research reports. And there are many other credible sites to do this. But probably, what I would like to say, one of the best resources you could have itself is Iconic Lab, where we're looking to identify and source those high-quality projects and help bring them to their own ICO. And we do this through sourcing and funding them. Everybody that comes into Iconic Lab receives a grant of up to 200K through which we promote them into their own ICO. This covers their ICO-related expenses as we accelerate them towards their own pre-sale. We also uh, provide transparency for the crypto markets, for financial reporting metrics that every one of our companies will be mandated to provide to the investors in a transparent fashion after they do their token sale. Now, of course, I mentioned before, we provide the seed funding, we provide business development expertise to create a real sustainable business case behind the tokens that we help launch through the accelerator program. These are not just cryptocurrencies or platforms, but real world business cases that can be monetized. We connect them with our group of investors, the ICNQ token holders, we'll get to that in a second, and we help them structure this in a perfectly legally compliant manner. Help set them up with KYC and AML service providers. Tell them everything they need to know from an international tax perspective. And help them domicile their SPV in a jurisdiction that makes sense for them, given the uniqueness of their token instrument. From there, we have many applications to our pool. We perform significant VC level due diligence on every single one of the companies that applies to our program. We provide them that service package and then accelerate them towards their exclusive pre-sale to the ICNQ token holders. Afterwards, we engage them in continuing support to help push them towards their own public ICO, generating downstream liquidity for the ICNQ token investors that participated in the pre-sale and helping from price uh, generation. Our due diligence process is very thorough. We look at every single one of the companies, we look at the backgrounds of the individuals, we do reference checks, we look at the technical feasibility of the platform, um, we help structure their token instrument themselves, we reach out to some of their clients, their service providers to get reference checks on each of the platforms and the relationships that they've established uh, with their clients in determining the feasibility of the business case before admitting them to the accelerator. We have our own skin in the game. We know that you will too if you invest through our platform. We want to make sure it's only the absolute best investment grade quality ICOs that graduate. We work with these companies for about a week or two. But actually, their uh, very first accelerator program kicked off last Sunday, and today is actually the capstone. You saw every one of our companies present yesterday or today. That was their very first pitch. And after this, we're taking them on the road show. Ten weeks, we'll be flying around the world to cities across Europe, Asia, and for those that will solicit for investment in the United States, to the United States. Helping them engage with their investors, attract community members, and grow and develop their platform in an organic fashion. Afterwards, we help them with their pre-sale to the ICNQ token holders, and provide them ongoing ICO support as they go towards their public sale. As I mentioned before, we had 165 companies apply to the program, of which we only accepted five. And the five we accepted are right here. 
Base Global, who's looking to disrupt the ticketing service based on their engine that will decentralize ticketing for artists and users. Brain Cities, who is bringing the world of blockchain and artificial intelligence together, working with major corporations such as SAP and HP. Topple, who's created a protocol to allow for uh, investments into emerging economies. Wonder, who created the world's first digital art museum. And Brio, whose engine allows for in-game, real-time video game advertising. Additionally, we have consulted many projects outside of the accelerator program. One case you'll actually see speaking in a little bit, Stefan Bune, right, right here. Uh, the gentleman of Cryptonaut, who have created an AI-backed uh, gaming hedge fund. And lastly, Pelopace, who are looking to digitize an individual's healthcare data to provide a basic minimum income for uh, services that are then offered to um, uh, health researchers. Now the question you should all be asking yourself is, well, how many to participate in these exciting companies? And the answer is by investing in the ICMQ token. The Iconic Lab club membership token allows for its investors to have exclusive access to the pre-sales of every company that graduates the Accelerator program. And this means exclusive access and unique first mover access to the discounts and the bonuses associated with those pre-sales to compensate for the additional risk for an earlier investment by participating in the pre-sale. This is very monetizable for individuals to hold, simply because of participating in the pre-sale and then trusting us to help accelerate these companies to their own public sale. We're looking to raise 10 million, 5 million of which will be used to fund the companies in the accelerator program, 3 million of which will be used for legal, tax, marketing, et cetera, uh, traditional business development expenses, and 2 million to launch the brand new platforms in New York, which we have just hired a managing director to help create that sourcing, as well as in Singapore. We are selling 75% of our tokens, with 15% being held by the Iconic Lab team to align our incentives to our own token holders, and 10% held by Iconic Lab itself to be able to provide for future hires. And it is with great pleasure, I can announce that a few weeks ago we closed a $1 million presale in a financing round led by TAS. And now the news that everyone's probably been waiting for, the community I know has been dying for months to hear this, but it brings me great pleasure to announce that this is the very first time we will have our public pre-sale for everyone that participates in our community on March 31st. It kicks off at 3 p.m. CET. We will be making 750,000 ICMQ available for a targeted fundraise of 500,000 euro. Immediately following this, we will be having our first public sale which we will be selling 3,000 ICNQ at a nominal value of one euro per token of three million euros. The next steps after our public sale will be to list on an exchange. We've been in many conversations and I can tell you that we will be listed on a regulated exchange here in Europe. I unfortunately cannot announce the name yet. We will also be performing a smart contract audit the audit is actually currently underway with a strategic partner of ours, Solidified IO. And we will be doing full KYC and AML, including video identification. Now, the team that's leading this project is, of course, myself, my fellow managing partner, uh, Max, as well as our CTO, or a blockchain expert, Sandris, marketing expert, Aravda, really helping develop the marketing campaign for the companies in our program, and our investment director, Lucas Mazowski, who has a significant background in private equity. We have a world-class advisory board. Every single one of these individuals has an integral function within that client lab, whether it be uh, helping us ideate new token models, whether it be uh, developing the business, making connections with accredited investors in the United States, or sharing academic research here through Professor Philip Sotner at the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management. But our probably most strategic uh, collaborator is FinLab. FinLab, of course, being a publicly traded company here in Germany. They are one of Europe's most renowned fintech company builders who made a small uh, minority investment into Iconic Lab back in November to help us grow and scale the program. But we don't stop there. We have many others, including LDJ Capital, helping us reach accredited investors in the United States. Token as a Service, otherwise known as TAS, who, as you see earlier, helped us uh, raise a significant amount of financing and a pre-sale, and even Solidified, who has helped us with our smart contract. 
After we do our token sale, we will be launching it in New York as well as in Singapore to help curate a better deal flow for our token holders. And at this moment, I would really like to thank you for your time. If you would like to learn more about Iconic Lab, please feel free to look us up on any one of these uh, news outlets. There's plenty of material out there. And if you have an interest in us, definitely join us on our Telegram channel, where you can find any of our team members available at all times for a conversation. Thank you so much. Questions we'll have a panel later. If you want to ask questions to him, just yep. hold on to them. Or you can find me outside. Perfect. <laughs> Next, I'd like to uh, introduce Philip.